So uh, first of all, a few words about myself. Uh, I'm retired. Uh, I'm doing research mathematics as a hobby. I used to work at the Open University in Milton Keynes, which is also home of Bletchley Park, famous for code breaking and Alan Turing. And my first task there in 2003 was to transfer a production system that used the obsolete LaTeX 209 for a, on a DEC Alpha machine running VMS onto modern hardware. So we, I, I learned a bit about persistence and portability from that. And I'm really pleased to be here and I'm delighted that at the first keynote, we were introduced to the Comprehensive Tech Archive, CTAN, and I mentioned that in my talk. And in the second keynote, there was much reference to the Geeks operating system, which I find very interesting and perhaps we'll see it as being relevant. So um, let's start by telling you what portable tech documents are. The first thing is they're an idea. They don't exist yet, but they solve a problem that does exist. So tech was developed by Don Knuth to typeset his multi-volume work, The Art of Computer Programming, and it goes back to 1982 for its stable release. So that's nearly 40 years old. And in 1988, I started using tech to write research math papers. And that was on a two megabyte RAM machine with 40 megabyte hard disk. So it's not a big program or it doesn't have to be a big program. Before that, I had to pay somebody to type my PhD thesis on an IBM Selectric. Now, by design, tech documents are portable. You get identical outputs across space, time, and platforms given identical inputs. They're reproducible, which is one of the key themes, I think, in this conference. So the problem I'm talking about is this, that the inputs consist of my stuff, plus all the fonts and styles and bibliographic data and everything else that go in to make my document. And CTAN, and Tech Live, which is a distribution rather than an archive, allow you to say my inputs are the same as your inputs. Not the document, but all the other stuff. But the problem is that to collaborate on a tech document requires a several gigabyte download and install, because that's how big Tech Live has become. Remember, I started on a 40 megabyte hard disk, but now it's several gigabytes. And Google Docs is much easier. So the way I'm going to approach this problem is to minimize dependencies and change the focus to the user experience. And this requires a different way of thinking about things that took me some time to get my head around. And it might take you more than the time I've got, but let's give it a go. When you've got a server or a PC, you're software focused, storage is cheap, you want to be prepared for everything that might come in. So you download lots, gigabytes, and when data comes in that's useful, you cache it. Whereas if you think about HTML on a web page, it's page focused, delay is deadly, people lose interest after half a second. So you minimize the download, and the download will be megabytes or less, and you cache useful software and other resources. Now, if you think about it, this is the difference between the active voice and the passive voice. So in the active voice, the server typesets the source document. It's the server that's doing the work. It's the server that is the subject of the sentence. Or is it the object? Uh, in the passive voice, the page is rendered by the web browser. And that's a user-focused way of looking at things. The user wants the page to be rendered. It doesn't care how it's rendered. So my conception of a portable document is as follows. It's just the text I wrote together with references to all the other sources. And the references will be Git secure hashes mostly to be retrieved from a portable tech doc 
tech document variant of CTAN or tech live. So the document says, this is the stuff I need to be processed. And there'll be some sort of guarantee that you can find that stuff. I've got four slides all together, so I'm pausing a little bit for this one. The main thing is that the documents drive the distribution of software. Somebody sends you a portable tech document and the stuff that you don't already have somehow gets downloaded automatically. And in a sense, that's what happened with PDF at the very beginning. There'd be a PDF file on a website and next to the PDF file, there'll be a link saying, you can download the Acrobat reader here. So the PDF documents drove the distribution of the Acrobat reader. Let's move on to the third slide, which is using Fuse to defuse the Git bomb. Let me explain what this is about. I'm running a tech document that's got maybe 50 files that I need to input, and they're all in CTAN. So we have a list of those 50 files and we download them from CTAN and we put them on our hard disk in such a way that tech, the program, can find them. But somebody else uses a different version of those files and if we want to run their version of their document, we've got to download the same 50 files and put them in the same 50 places but one of them slightly different. So there's something called a Git bomb, which is quite interesting. It's a very innocuous, very small Git archive or repository, and it contains only megabytes. But when you make, when you check it out, it occupies gigabytes. And that's simply because it's got thousands of paths that are almost identical and they end up with ha 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 ha, which is why it's called a billion laughs. So that's an example of a Git bomb. And similar things can be done in other languages. Now, when I'm collaborating with other people or if somebody's reporting a problem with their tech file, they've got their own particular tech life distribution and I don't know how it differs from mine. And even if I knew how it differs, I have no easy way to reproduce it. So I view all the installed tech life distributions with all their multiple variations as on the one hand, a homemade Git bomb. And on the other hand, as an obstacle to collaboration. Now, Fuse, is file system in user space, which is an interesting transitional technology. And by writing a certain amount of code in a language like Python, you can treat a Git archive as if it were already checked out, but without the explosion. So you only unpack the things you need to unpack. And this is not the only technology that does this sort of thing. There's Squash FS which is widely used in small domestic appliances such as routers, XML catalog, which is familiar in the SGML and XML world, and the ERI resolver in XSLT, all of these say, you don't say, you say what it is you want, but you don't say how to get it. And another part of the system explains how to get it. And that's how it works with Git. You, to Git, you say, here's the secure hash, go fetch it for me. And that's precisely what it's meant by saying Git is a content addressable store. So let's move on. Um, this conference came at a very, very good time for me because I was thinking about some of these things already due to difficulties with TechLive and CTAN that I was aware of. And also in the need to be able to what's the word, flexibly distribute varied software for various purposes, one of which is accessibility. So here's my prediction, and it's going to be wrong because it involves the future. Um, but first, let's remember what makes PDF portable. Well, the first thing that makes it portable is 
Acrobat Reader, then the ISO standard, and finally lots of compatible software. So PDF is a way of packaging a document and the resources needed to render it into a convenient form. And there's a similar piece of software called EPUB, which is, does a similar sort of role, not for page rendered material, material to be printed, but for web pages. So I'm much smaller than Adobe. And if there's sufficient interest, these are the sort of things I'm looking for. Well, conversations with you people, that'd be wonderful. Uh, and then next year, I hope to get some toy examples of portable tech documents. And I also think I ought to approach geeks uh, because I think there's some commonality in what's going on. And there's also something called Unison Lang, which is a secure hash functional programming language. And maybe in 2023, portable tech documents will be usable via uh, a variant of CTAN or Tech Live. Now, the final thing I think is very interesting, which is a pack file, a Git pack file, contains multiple trees, multiple trees that you could check out. And I think it would be wonderful if you could mount that right as part of booting. So when you boot, you can mount a number of uh, git pack files and that will give you your operating system but whether or not in it does it the ability to mount git pack files would be a tremendous boon for me and i'm hoping that some other people at this conference might also find it a tremendous boon for them because i'm only one person and i don't have the resources to solve that problem but i'd love to see it solved so I think that's my talk. Um, the rest is up to questions, I think. I can go back over slides if, there are ne if necessary, but why don't I stop sharing for the moment? Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, we do have a, a comment on the, the element chat, uh, talking about your, your 2020, Question mark, quarter question mark. Uh, not for Git pack files, but uh, what you described for for mounting the immutable system is really close to IPFS, which we had a talk before on this session. I'm sorry, I missed that talk. Um, I, I've looked at I, IPFS, and I think I think it's very interesting. But it seems to have a lot of things I don't need, particularly mm -hmm. for what I'm doing. Um, most tech users are used to getting downloads so that they can run their documents. And the um, using Git, Git pack file seems to be, Git seems to be a ready-made technology that really works well for what I'm doing because you can sort of negotiate things quite, quite nicely between the client and the server, if you like. So I don't understand that. Perhaps I should have a conversation with the person that spoke about the interplanetary file system. That's a great plus. Thank you. Uh, the other question that I had, uh, are you aware about uh, Tectonic? It's a... Uh, yeah. Go on, I, I'm not. Yeah, yeah Tectonic is a, a, a program that downloads the 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 text requirements for building a document on the fly instead of being like the model in Ubuntu or Debian where you need to download multiple gigabytes of everything. So this might be something that also connects well with your what you're looking for. It 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 certainly does. And um sort of one of my distant ambitions is to get tech running properly in the browser. Mm -hmm. And you, you you can't do that if the precondition is downloading tech live. So this determining exactly what the requirements are is a really important problem for that. Uh, there's a related 
piece of work in the R community. And uh, we, 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 we had uh, the R archive mentioned earlier. So I'll get the name wrong, but I'll try. Yui He uh, has created a distribution of tech that's about 20 megabytes rather than so many gigabytes that is customized for the needs of our markdown. And that allows him to, and our other R users, to use it in a GitHub action in a way that you can't use the tech live because it's so big. Yeah, that, that's actually how I wrote my PhD dissertation last year, using R Markdown and putting on CI because it was so much easier than setting up text live and everything. Oh, you should give a little talk then. <laughs> so you know the problem of tech having everything and you don't want everything. There's just particular things you want. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have another question. Uh, do you have a mailing list to discuss what you're doing and to follow it? I don't know if I will be useful, but I would love to see. Oh, fantastic. Well, my my email address is jfine2358, that's the five Fibonacci numbers, at gmail.com. And I'm pretty sure that's... Why don't you raise an issue on the GitHub repository? That's the way to get a mailing list for this. So I don't know who it is that asked that question, but I'm delighted to have it because it's absolutely why I'm here. And if I can help you as well, that would be even great, even better. Yep. I should mention that Norbert Prenig uh, is giving a talk also on Tech Live uh, in the following session in room, we're in room three, it's in room two. Yeah, uh, and he's, he, he's very much do, doing it the CTAN Tech Live way whereas I'm looking to produce something that's very much light, more lightweight, and as I said earlier, focused on people that want to typeset a particular document rather than people that want to be able to typeset every document that's given to them. Oh, we have another question. Uh, I am a researcher and definitely love tech tech, 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 tech. Uh, I wonder what kind of user experience behavior change you would expect from this promising agenda. A lot of people are using Overleaf. Overleaf is another way of solving the same problem that Google Cox is different. What it does, Overleaf runs tech on a server and makes it accessible through a web browser. Now, one of the problems with Overleaf is that because it's running on a server, they tend to be a bit conservative about what they allow. And it's a bit hard to sort of propagate innovations. So the, the, the user experience change that I'm interested in is the following. That to produce accessible outputs from tech, you need a lot of stuff and it's quite hard to configure. And the people that are authoring documents don't know how to do that sort of configuration. So the change I'm looking for is that the tech environment, if you like, become more productive in the same way that the R environment is. So that's perhaps the goal I'm looking for. And another way of looking at it is that I find the tech community somewhat conservative and resistant to change. And the sort of change I'm looking to bring, build about, bring about, which particularly includes accessibility, is much more easily done in the R community. Um, there's somebody I, I, I know um, in Auckland who's a senior lecturer in statistics. He uses R very, very much. And he knows that R produces accessible output because he's blind himself. He's able to function as a statistician teaching using the R system, whereas tech producing PDF would be a dead loss for him. It would be any, wouldn't be any good. So that's the sort of change I'm looking for. I think the other change I'm looking for is that it's a lot easier to share tech for specialized purposes. So that uh, the R systems, UEHE, C, um, created a small distribution of tech that worked for our markdown. And if we can make it work for other systems so that 
Well, let's go back. When I was writing my papers in 1988, I didn't need a, I only had a 40 megabyte hard disk, so I didn't need a gigabyte download. And if we can make tech small enough to do specialized niches, that would be great. I hope that's answered the question. I think it does. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, You're very welcome. And um, thank you for yeah. allowing me to, to speak speak with you, even though I don't do any packaging. <laughs> oh, this was amazing. Thank you.